Are GMOs or genetically modified organisms haram? So an interesting conversation that recently came up that I've read about was that GMOs could be haram. And that's got me thinking, hmm, I wonder why GMOs can be seen as haram or impermissible in Islam. And one of the things and arguments that I saw was it basically talked about getting a fish's DNA from the Arctic where it wasn't able to freeze and then a really sweet tasting strawberry. Combining them together and creating this hybrid strawberry and where it doesn't freeze year round when you're growing the crop. And then it made me think, wait a minute, is this changing God's creation? Did Allah or God decide to make the strawberry a year round crop? Was it supposed to be this way? And it got me thinking and wondering, are we changing God's creation? And that is haram. Because again, in all different types of scripture, knowledge, or learning, in different religions even, changing the creation of God is seen as impermissible. I wonder if it is. And then spiritually, people always say, don't eat GMO foods, don't eat GMO foods. You gotta eat organic, you gotta eat organic. And then nowadays we know all the different problems that happen with the fertilizers and the different chemicals that they're putting in our food. So then it gives me wondering. So spiritually and aesthetically, it makes sense as to maybe not eating these GMO foods or these additive foods or things that were altered from the original style of the food. Even when it comes down to learning about seeded fruits and seeded foods versus non and understanding, wait, the original seeded fruits were better for you, more alkalized for you, were better for your body, versus some of the stuff nowadays that it's just for profits, for more sweetness, to get you hooked more on the sweetness and the sugar of it, rather than the nutrition of the fruit. What? Again, there isn't a unanimous consensus whether or not GMOs are haram or impermissible in Islam, but me personally looking at it as just, again, third party person viewing it from the outside, thinking, you know what, if I can, I'll try not to because I kind of understand and maybe, you know, it is a problem. Because for me, I understand the difference between, okay, let's say there's a seed. This is an apple seed. I grew this apple seed and it's really healthy. Now this apple tree grew, it became healthy. Now I grafted something from that tree to grow that tree again because it was a good seed. It's a lot different than genetically changing it, creating this hybrid in a lab versus understanding the Punnett square, for example, or making sure things go down a certain route where you're using what's natural and already happening to get the better tasting food, a better tasting thing, and increasing crop yields. For example, even with seed. Oh, this is a really a better seed. This seed I'm having has given me this amount of crops that it's able to grow. It has adapted, it has evolved, and that is normal. And to me, seeing that, that's not haram, right? You're just using science to actually advance your crop, your food, whatever it is. That's cool. To me personally, I think that makes sense. But when, again, you start doing all this playing God aspect where you're taking, again, a fish's DNA from here and doing this and connecting them together to create this super fruit or this super thing, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's just right with me. What do you guys think? Islamically too, when it talks about altering God's creation, is that when you're going out of your way to kind of alter God's creation, it is seen as impermissible. And the reason as to why is because you have to believe that God's creation is perfect. So if you're changing God's perfect creation, then hmm, there's an issue. A good example of this is in Islam, we also believe that you shouldn't alter yourself. For example, I shouldn't basically change my nose or change this or change that and restructure my body and face because again, you were born perfect. You can obviously beautify yourself and be clean and stuff like that and use this special scent. Yeah, but actually physically altering yourself is seen as wrong. So would it not be the same with our food? And that's the question in the conversation we're having. Another reason as to why it could be haram or seen as impermissible is the unknown nature or studies that have been proven on are GMO foods healthier for us, are they better for us? Are there long-term consequences of eating GMO foods? We really don't know because time hasn't happened long enough since we've started using GMO foods. So we really don't know what we're ingesting into our bodies and if it's gonna have a long-term effect on us. Again, with combining different species like the fish and the fruit, there is some sort of crossing a genetic boundary. For example, again, if you take two different apples and combine it, okay, that might make a little more sense where it could happen, et cetera, et cetera. But combining two varying different species into one thing to create this different thing, that could be seen as haram, I can see that. Lastly, one of the things ethically and environmentally is this concern of, wait a minute, when you create this anti-pest food, et cetera, et cetera, then what happens to that organism? Does that affect the food chain? Does that affect society? Does that affect the environment? There's so many different if, ands, and buts that we really don't know that makes me think and understand that maybe it could be haram or maybe it could be impermissible because of this, because spiritually and obviously environmentally, there could be a problem that's happening because of this. And it got me thinking, I wonder if, this is wrong and we shouldn't be doing it. Again, it is still up for debate. There's not 100% of a consensus on it. But me personally, I wanna know what you think because again, for me, it's just a topic of conversation that I'm curious about and I've always thought about it, but I never knew the right full answer. So again, if you know the answer, you pitch in and chime in in the comments, please feel free. I'd love to read your opinion. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll be doing this every week. 
talking about different things spiritually and extendedly, just, you know, learning and trying to talk about different things in life and society. I really appreciate you tuning in. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and talk to all your friends about it. Because again, helps the channel, helps it grow, and talk about a positive message as you're having intelligent conversations. Appreciate you. I'll see you next week. See you later.